Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Heather and this is the second video in my Emetophobia Thrive Journey series. Um, things have been going uh, pretty slowly the last couple of weeks. I am in the accounting field so this time of year is really hectic for us. Um, so I'm not able to devote as much time to the program as I would like, but um, the title of the video it doesn't matter how slowly you go, the rest of that is only that you don't stop. So that's really been my motto the last couple of weeks is I may only be able to read a paragraph here, a paragraph there, but that's okay as long as I don't stop. I'm okay with slow process, throw slow progress. Um, obviously trying to rush through this program the first time did not serve me well. So you know the first time I went through it I read everything so fast I wanted to get to the end to the answer and that answer is not at the end of this book the answer is within every page and every word there's not a wasted sentence in this book um, you really do need to read it comprehend it do the actions do the exercises and understand it um, if you don't seek out a consultant. Um, my consultant is uh, Claire Rogers. She's been fantastic. I had my second appointment with her this morning. Uh, I'm really enjoying working with her. So uh, one thing that she had suggested, because I am doing my journal every day, um, one thing that she suggested was that um, in the morning I do my first section of the Thrive Journal. So this first portion of page one of each day uh, it's called establishing a thriving attitude and that's exactly what it is you want to establish your attitude for the day your positive attitude for the day um, you want to decide what kind of day you want to have how you're gonna get there and um, personally I have a couple of mantras that I do um, every morning the first one is just really simple I say it to myself you know as I'm feeding my horses and uh, as I'm going about my business in the morning and then um, you know in the showers when I do my visualizations I think about what kind of day I want to have how I want it to go I visualize myself um, calmly making it to work and calmly getting into work and settling in for the day and getting a lot of things done and um, then I also do my positives I do my positives probably two to three times a day which is not enough uh, you know Rob says in the book five or more times a day um, so I'm gonna work on that as well um, but then you know at the end of the day when I get home which is sometimes pretty late um, by the time I feed my horses myself get take care of the dog and spend some time with my husband I have enough time to do the rest of my journaling and maybe a paragraph or two but that's okay as long as I don't stop moving forward um, I've been going on one of those uh, support forums you really really shouldn't do that um, I mean, yeah, there's a lot of really nice, supportive people there, uh, but there's also a lot of things that they support your negative thinking. They, you're, they're colluding with your beliefs. They're um, helping you with your safety seeking and your coping behaviors. And a lot of people go on there and say, oh my gosh, I feel so sick. Am I going to get sick? Am I going to get sick? And people trying to help will be like, no, you're not going to get sick. Oh, it's just, it's just nerves. It's just this. It's just that they're not your doctor they're not you and no one can guarantee that you won't be sick period I mean there's that's what this phobia is about we're we're out of control we cannot control that we can't say with a hundred percent certainty that it will not happen because we just we don't have that power um, another thing that I kept seeing was they'll talk about the things that they've tried um, CBT there's um, another recovery program there's Thrive there's uh, tapping and hypnotherapy uh, there's several different versions of counseling and therapy and psychotherapy and a lot of it they'll say well it didn't work for me did you work for it did you work for it um, first time around I put about 50% effort in and I'm better I'm better but I, I worked for it um, not real hard but that's my question to you is did you work for it if you tried it did you work for it or did you just read it and expect to get better you can't just read a book or take a pill 
That's not going to make it go away. That's not how this works. Um, not getting paid for this. Um, <laughs> I just, I really do believe in this program. It's, um, I've seen improvement. Like I said in my first video, I've seen progress. I am making progress. So the last couple of weeks I've been working on pushing myself and challenging myself. Um, because you've got your three, uh, psycho your psychological foundation, your three pieces of that, your locus of control, your social anxiety, and your self-esteem. So I'm really working on strengthening my foundation. That's where I need to put my focus on right now. So um, I'm working on the social anxiety and the self-esteem. We have a benefit that we go to as a family every year. It's a cause that I'm very passionate about. Um, and last year, I didn't go at all because of this disorder I've created in myself. I just... I didn't even leave the house. Uh, my husband and my parents and my in-laws and everybody went without me. It was a really lonely night. Um, I was just here by myself, wallowing in my self-pity. So um, this year I went. I didn't have any expectations. I didn't have any, um, you know, set time limit. I had to stay there for 20 minutes or 30 minutes or uh, I had to do something specific. I just, uh, I spent some time Cooey's Law. I was envisioning everything positively. I was staying calm and um, enjoying the event. And so I spent, you know, a good week in my morning showers. Instead of visualizing my day at work, I was visualizing the event. And um, when I got there, I didn't look for the bathrooms. I didn't look for a trash can. I didn't feel uncomfortable um, to any great degree. Uh, you know, it was obviously... I'm, I've got some social anxiety, so it was a little bit um, uncomfortable, but certainly very tolerable. Um, you know, I went through and did the silent auction stuff and looked around and we socialized. I had a full meal buffet style, which um, is pretty difficult for me uh, to be around food that other people have prepared and that other, other people are touching and, and walking by and breathing on. and. Um, so I did that. I ate a full meal. It was really good. I even had two desserts. Uh, it was a really good event. I enjoyed my family and my friends. And um, But, you know, towards the very end of it, I was tired. I'd had enough. Um, you know, my husband was saying something about how the coffee was, didn't agree with him or something. It was upsetting his stomach. And um, he went off to the bathroom. And so automatically I started to let it get into my head. I started to go down that path where I was just thinking about it and um, I was tired. I wasn't really able to uh, calm myself down. And um, so I did, I took my mom and, and I left early after I checked on my husband and made sure he was fine. Um, <laughs> my husband and, and my father and everybody stayed and it was about another 15 minutes. So I, you know, I made it through 90% of, of that event. and. That's a huge win for me. That is a huge win. Last year, 0%. This year, 90%. Next year, who knows, 110%. I may stay after. Um, so that was a really big thing that I've been processing the hell out of since uh, last Saturday night. Um, and then the following day for the brunch, we've had um, a family member with some pretty significant health issues. So my mother-in-law, uh, made plans for a brunch and it was pretty early the following morning. Uh, I don't like to be messed with in the morning. Mornings are tough for me. Um, so, you know, we get ready and begrudgingly I'm stomping around. I'm being bitchy and being pissy and moany and just don't want to go. And so we get in the car and it's about a 45 minute drive there. You know, not a big deal. Um, but, you know, I'm starting to get anxious and I'm starting to feel sorry for myself and I'm feeling dizzy and I don't want to go and, um, you know, I'm starting to cry and I just feel uncomfortable and I don't want to do it. And my husband is sitting there holding my hand in the passenger seat and he's saying to me, you know, this is, this is my family. I have to go, but you don't have to. We can turn this car around. We can go home and I can, I can drop you off and it's okay. It's, it's fine. We can do that. You know, and as I'm sitting there with tears rolling down my face being pissy and bitchy and moany. Why? My husband needs me. You know, he took his vow very seriously, for better or worse, and he's offering 
to, you know, give of himself and, um, be late to the, the function and bring me home and make excuses for me. And I just couldn't, couldn't do that. I decided that I needed to buck up little camper and, and go. It's not all about me. This life isn't all about me. So I decided to step outside of myself. And by the time we got there, um, I had stopped crying. I was still kind of bitchy, but, um, I went ahead and I went in and I greeted everybody and uh, about 10, 15 minutes into being there, I was fine again. You know, um, yeah, I'm going to a food oriented event. So yes, I'm, you know, it's going to be a little strange if I don't eat, but it's my family. My family wants the best for me. They just want me to be healthy, healthy and happy. And if they're looking at me, it's because they're concerned. It's not because they're judging me. So I went ahead and I sat down to eat and I did eat. I ate a full meal. I had seconds of something. Uh, then we spent the rest of the afternoon talking and um, I really did enjoy myself and I'm glad that I did that. In this life, it's not all about us. It's about the people we love and we care about and, and that care and love us too. And so I'm using that as part of my strength as well. Um, you know, we spend so much time thinking about ourselves and how we feel and how upset and awful we feel and how we can't possibly cope. And um, we can, we can and we will. This is a really strange disorder. It is a really strong disorder. The mind is a very strong, strong thing. And it can create a lot of things, the dizziness, the stomach, the everything. Um, for me, I'm spending, you know, some time getting to know my body. So if my stomach hurts, I'm not automatically jumping to the conclusion that I'm going to be sick. I'm slowing myself down now and I'm thinking, why does it hurt? Is it gas? Do I have indigestion? Do I have re reflux? Um, you know, did I eat too much? Did I... You know, we have thousands of stomach aches in our lifetimes. Do we ever throw up? Usually not. Um, we're not very throwy uppy people. So, you know, I'm working on that as well. The physical symptoms are probably the hardest for me right now. Um, between the pain and the dizziness. The dizziness is what really gets to me and what really drags me down. Um, I'm working on that. Just today, I was feeling really dizzy, um, even through my appointment with Claire. And, um, you know, I just, I could have sat home. I could have just laid around all day, but I chose to get in the truck and take my horse down to the arena as I had planned. And I even loped my horse. I mean, some of you may not know what that means, but, um, this time last year, that would not have been possible. I was a walk kind of a girl on top of my horse. I've been riding for 15 years, but I've lost my confidence. This disorder has affected me in so many ways. So, um, you know, I pushed through and I had a really good time. I'm really glad I went. Uh, right now, I still feel really shitty. I feel really dizzy and uncomfortable and um, went and took a shower and that didn't really help a whole lot. Um, you know, of course, I'm thinking in the back of my mind about the girl at work who got sick. We don't even share the same bathroom. She didn't just go get sick and then come in the kitchen and eat, you know. Um, so the likelihood of me catching anything from her is pretty darn low. Um, so, obviously, even, you know, beginning my second time through, there's still a lot to work on. There's still a lot of struggles and a lot of things that need to happen, um, but they will happen. But it's not going to work for you if you don't work for it. So I really, uh, if you haven't picked up the book, I would really encourage you to do so. What have you got to lose? You could lose more months, years of your life to this disorder, or you can spend a little bit of money and pick up a book that could change your life. So uh, I intend to keep doing this. I also have um, a blog that I've started. Um, probably will be doing videos every couple of weeks, at least through tax season, just because things are so hectic and I don't have a lot of time right now. Um, but again, I would encourage you to pick up this book. Uh, if you already have the book, try the journal. If you already have both, 
try a consultant. Um, just do something for yourself, for your family. Um, you know, it's, it's a really strange disorder, but we created it and we can stop it. So uh, I really hope that this is helping people. Um, it's helping me keep track and, and keep me moving and keep me motivated. So again, I hope it's helping some of you. And until next time, take care, everybody, and get thriving.